A new report into the acceleration from fossil fuels to clean energy finds we might be at a tipping point. Written by Tim Buckley, Director of Climate Energy Finance, the report is titled A Massive Global Solar Boom is Disrupting Energy Markets and Speeding the transition and Tim joins me live in the studio. How are you? Good afternoon, Jenny. It's a long report, but it's very in-depth and uh, give us a bit of an overview of it. It is staggering to see how much manufacturing activity is actually underway in 2023. And it's being led by China. And uh, I think we've seen the US Inflation Reduction Act sparking a similar response from America. So it's great in many respects. We've got a climate emergency, but it's great that both China, America, even Europe, Japan, Korea, India, they're all piling in, they're all responding and they're investing in deploying solutions at a scale that actually could solve the climate crisis. But uh, in particular, solar module manufacturing, we have seen a huge surge in China's manufacturing capacity, 300% between 2021 and 2023, which means I think every solar install forecast globally is going to prove to be too conservative. Mm. And what about for Australia? What are we doing? Australia is getting there. We are. We have just seen the Albanese government announce the Australia-US compact. Mm -hmm. uh, we're waiting on Madeleine King, Minister King's uh, resource critical minerals response strategy. That's due any week now. And we are calling for the Australian federal government to mobilise $100 billion of public strategic capital into the Australian manufacturing, mining, value-adding sectors in order to crowd in two or three hundred billion dollars of private investment. So we should see an investment, jobs and export boom in Australia on the back of it. Well, you sound very positive. I know you're in Canberra next week for it. So, um, yeah, so, yeah, pretty positive then. It, it is amazing. Even since we released mm. the report, the polysilicon price, which is a core indicator of where module prices are going, it's dropped 75% to date, year to date. It's down 20% in the last week. So I am actually tipping mm. a major sustained reduction in uh, so the polysilicon price that's the raw material for solar modules and so therefore we would be we are forecasting a 10 percent annual decline in solar costs over the rest of this decade which is a huge relief to the fo fossil fuel price inflation mm. that have been gouging us over the last two years yeah and you've also got another graphic to show us on screen so um do you want to run us through what that one is i think it will be uh, up soon on the uh, uh record number of jobs in the last six months. There we go. That, so that chart shows the absolute boom, a trebling in US construction activity in the manufacturing sector, a trebling of activity. So the US has the Inflation Reduction Act and we are seeing investors piling in, effectively onshoring. So there's a bit of a trade war that's emerged between China and America and America's response is to invest in manufacturing capacity in America. And so President Biden seeing a huge surge in employment activity and that's the sort of chart we'll be taking to Canberra, as you mentioned, to highlight to the Albanese government that Australia needs to have a similar opportunity. It is there, but we need the government policy to set the framework to actually send the signal so private investment can be mobilised here in Australia as well. And what about the International Energy Agency? They put out a recent report as well. The International Energy Agency's really been a bit behind in, in forecasting this boom, which is what we're sort of provoking them with, with our analysis. So we've seen the solar manufacturing sector see a massive surge in manufacturing. We've also seen the um, electric vehicle and battery manufacturing sector. So what this chart shows that uh, in electric battery manufacturing capacity, we now have sufficient plans globally for manufacturing capacity to actually deliver on net zero emissions trajectories. So that in the space of 15 months, the IEA is showing how solar manufacturing capacity, battery manufacturing capacity globally is surging. And so to me, I see that chart as a, a precursor of where Australia really should be seizing the opportunity because we are the number one supplier of lithium 
to the world, half the world's lithium. We have all of the critical minerals, all the copper, all the nickel, uh, all of the opportunities, green iron, green aluminium. So I think it's Australia's opportunity to seize. And uh, that chart highlights the magnitude of the shift that's underway. Uh, it'll be really interesting to watch how the Australian government responds and how industry piles in with a whole lot of new opportunities for Australia. And there are a few leaders out there who are still talking about nuclear and, you know, small modular reactors and so forth in terms of energy. What's, what's your take on that? Well, it, as I think even the nuclear proponents point out, there won't be a small modular nuclear reactor built this decade anywhere in the world. It would take us till 2040 or 2045. If Australia wanted to build a nuclear power plant today, it would be another 20 years. In the meantime, we can build solar assets in the space of a year. We can deploy batteries in 18 months. We can deploy wind farms in two years. And uh, so ultimately, while they discuss whether or not nuclear is a potential solution, in two decades from now, we can actually deploy hundreds of billions of dollars in new generating capacity, lower cost and zero emissions capacity. And that can be done in the next couple of years. So uh, I would say let's actually wait till America actually builds an SMR before we start worrying about whether or not Australia should follow. All right. Well, good luck in Canberra. You're prepared for the uh, cold temperatures. <laughs> it's going to be a chilly one. <laughs> It'll be chilly, but no, absolutely. Thank All you. Right. Thanks, Tim.